Alice in Zorku Episode 2 has arrived, and this was my most anticipated Episode 2. Even though I love things like Attack on Titan, Boku no Hero, I know what to expect with those series. But this was just a new surprise for me that I was dying to watch Episode 2 as soon as I finished Episode 1. I, I re-watched Episode 1 despite it being a double-length episode. And this episode, though it's completely structured differently than the previous episode, it was still great in its own way. Now, I didn't enjoy it as much as the first episode, but that doesn't take away from the fact that I thought this was a brilliant, like, episode two. Now, I can already tell a lot of people may be feeling like dropping off if they were sticking around after episode one, mainly because this was more kind of slice of life moments, a lot more Moe cute kind of comedy moments, but it still has just as much eeriness and kind of more dark vibes and kind of depressing just aspects to it underneath the cute aesthetic, because our main character, Sana, we know she had a messed up life at this facility. I mean, we get to see a bit of what drove her away, as when she was originally there, she was like in this cave, just kind of fed stuff she was experimented on, like she literally was treated like a lab rat. And when she eventually saw the twins, that's when her life got a bit more happy, had a bit more meaning. She was treated like a little girl. She got these cute clothes. She got to act like a kid. But then she saw something happen to someone in this facility that literally blood splattered they turned them into some sort of monster meaning that they probably will do that to all of the girls who are there and that drove her away so there still is that eeriness and just like holy fuck like what are they doing to these little girls that they're willing to do this but it's layered underneath all this kind of cute moments and seeing sauna act like a kid not like this supernatural lab rat i thought was really damn good like if we look at episode one of this series she didn't seem like a normal girl like i mean she was literally trying to make deals with the old man and literally just she felt like she was far older or she had far too much knowledge for a girl her age which leads me to the question as when she's talking she's thinking in her past it sounds like an adult woman who is narrating her past now there's a couple ways that they could take this either a she was an adult when she came to the facility and whatever experimentations happened maybe her mind was put in a body of a child or this was just her reminiscing from the future and she is going to grow up and live an adult life there's a couple ways they can take that though i can't really speculate on which way they're going to fully go until we see more in the series but we've always seen like with episode one she didn't feel like a normal girl, despite, like, even if you, like, remove her supernatural abilities, her personality and the way she talks wasn't how a little girl was acting. So now that she's in a normal home and then Zorku's granddaughter comes in and kind of takes care of her, she cooks for her and just treats her as a little girl. And like there's even these moments where she's just going up and down the stairs and the stairs are squeaking and she's having fun with that. There is this moment of you're thinking, wow, she actually is acting like a kid. This little girl who's experimented on and always treated like this mystical lab rat gets to have a child life at least for a little bit here. And it was really nice seeing those kind of little slice of life moments, the cute moe moments, and then we got to see a bit more of the darker stuff. As this is no, it's not like this is some crazy, dark, like, depressing series. It's going to have its elements of darkness. But I like how they're layering it underneath all the kind of carefreeness. But it serves a purpose to show who Sana is and who Sana can become, as she's always been treated as never a little girl, but more of this supernatural weapon, more or less. So it's great to see her interact with someone more or less closer to her own age, at least. Or at least someone who seems to be very similar to her own. As I saw people speculate that Zorku's granddaughter was probably dead and in fact she's not dead it's that her parents died when she was a young kid as we get to see with the flashback when sauna's powers are going crazy and she gets to see a, a moment of her past with her grandfather so there is this level of both of them kind of feel like they didn't have something they lost something and they didn't get to have that childhood so i think she kind of sees something in sauna that she saw in herself back in the day and i think it's going to be really sweet to see both of their relationship because it just felt so pure it felt so natural and it felt really funny i mean the, like the moments with the pigs where her powers are going crazy because she can't control her powers and just the whole pancake moment there was a lot of really funny moments that really just made me smile and i had a blast with this episode like really there was no cgi this episode which i think they're going to use the cgi probably with the moments of really big like action scenes that maybe they don't have time but it also could be that they use cgi as much as they did last week because it was a double length episode and they needed to save time somehow it's going to be interesting but i thought the actual overall art quality and animation quality was good like it wasn't spectacular but it was damn good like nonetheless and even the ost there was a couple of tracks they just they weren't really that bombastic but they had this moment to really just kind of amplify the cute scenes and i really liked it 
but I thought this was a really good episode. I could see a lot of people saying this wasn't that great of an episode just because it was very different from the first episode, but it serves the same purpose as the first episode did. I don't see any difference there. It was just executed in a different way, and I'm really liking the relationships we have with Zoroku's granddaughter, and now we have Sana and Zoroku. Like, I think it's a great character dynamic, and the facility is getting an idea of where she is, so I think within the next couple of episodes, some shit's gonna go down. But I love this episode, and I'd be interested here. What did everyone think of this episode? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Or did you think it was just okay? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And before you leave, hit that like button, share your support. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.